Hi everybody. So every Friday I do this chat um, at 11 o'clock and it's just an opportunity to really connect with everybody. So I hope that you're getting something out of them. I try and bring a little a, a topic each time. Um, but I also just like to connect with everybody and see how everybody's doing. Um, so definitely chime in and let me know what's happening with you and what's up. Um, I thought today we could talk about relationships. I don't even know if anybody was really like interested in this, but I find relationships to be very interesting. Um, and how much is really formulated, I find, from childhood. How our relationships that we have throughout our lives are from what I have seen and experienced with myself and, and others, um, how much we bring into adulthood from childhood. So, you know, we can go as deeply as we want with that. Hi, Tony. Um, we can go as deeply as we want with that, but I thought we could just touch upon some things about relationships why they're good for us, the types of relationships there are, um, and essential um, goals or to, in order to have a healthy relationship, what is essential in having a healthy relationship. And, you know, I just, I also just want to bring to the forefront, no matter what, how challenging relationships are and can be. And you know, a lot of people will see a relationship as a mirror for their own stuff that needs to be dealt with, right? So if you're looking at the other person that you're in a relationship with and there's stuff that's bothering you or stuff that's just, it keeps coming up, for example, issues in the relationship, um, how that really is in actuality a mirror. It's mirroring what we need to or could benefit from working on ourselves. I'm afraid to adjust this. Ooh, okay. Um, so why are relationships important? Relationships are imperative. This is from HuffPost.com. Relationships are imperative for many different reasons, reasons, such as increasing our emotional well-being, creating stability, learning how to be a good friend or mate, having someone to count on and trust in times of need, and someone to vent to when we face challenges. And friends and mates take away loneliness. So... That's just kind of a generalized thing that I have found as far as what's out there. Um, and having a friend or somebody in a relationship um, is gonna help us feel included. And each of our relationships elic elicit different responses in ourselves that help us to grow and learn about ourselves, which is what I was saying at the beginning of this video was <clears throat> these are our mirrors, right? So when we have a relationship, we're looking in a mirror that's telling us what we need to help grow ourselves. Um, so there's very so many different things that you can touch on as far as relationships go. I'm gonna keep it pretty surface today, um, but it's definitely worthy of a conversation and um, please chime in if you have anything that you'd like to say. So speaking from my own experience, just very briefly, um, so I grew up in a family of four children um, and my parents um, divorced when I was about 15 
and my siblings and I remained very quite close with each other um, which is nice and um, I'm trying to like think from my own perspective what has really influenced me the most on a relationship level with others and you know I definitely I would I definitely would have to say that I do come from a family that I've always known that um, I have been I am loved and that there is people that have my back so you know coming from that place when I that's a lot of how I personally treat others you know I like to I like to ha help others and I like to let people know that I have their back if they're in need of something or if something's going on in their life just to you know for me that's more important than anything um, is to let others know that they're not alone and I'm here for them and I definitely feel like that came for me that was instilled in me from my family so definitely grateful for that hi Pat okay so um, what are the five most important things in a relationship this is according to it's called join one love.org this is where I got this from communication number one respect number two boundaries number three trust number four support number five so what are some of the things that you find essential in a healthy relationship for you do any of those touch base with you at all do that any of those hit home for you communication respect boundaries trust support um, yeah I mean when I think about any relationship that I have um, you know it's easier the closer that you are with somebody to work on those things um, versus people in your life who maybe you don't see a lot or um, somebody that you've just met and there's definitely aspects of that list I would say that for me personally I can only speak for myself you know I'll work on maybe one or two of those things with some people and then one or two of those things with other people so um, you might not get all of those things from the same person right and for me um, the people closest with me I would have to say that yes um, of those five things communication respect boundaries trust and support those are definitely things that I aspire to have in all of my closer relationships with people um, but let's talk about communication in all of that how do we communicate with people right how do we how do we speak clearly and honestly and get our point across um, in a loving way that also gets our needs met and is there enough self-reflection before we get to that point or are we saying things off the cuff or out of an emotional response um, so communication you know I feel like it should be taught in schools actually um, just really how to speak with somebody right it's something that we work on with children from a very young age as parents but it would be a really wonderful um, course a program to offer in a school situation um, along with other things that are life 
learning, changing, growing things, right? Like finances and all that stuff. Um, things that you're going to bring into your adult life that are actually going to um, help give you a, a really great life, a better life. Um, respect, boundaries is a big one. Um, trust is another one. Trust is, trust is tricky, right? And, I, you know, again, like I said at the beginning of this, um, how much of the behaviors that, that we have in relationships as adults go back to childhood? How much was taught to us, whether it was um, modeled by our, our family, our parents, or elders in, in our families, um, how much was instilled in us, how much was actually verbalized to us. You know, and a lot of us come from elders in our families that didn't really communicate, um, right? It's how many of us have elderly people in our lives that we don't even know their medical history because they don't talk about it, right? Or they never did or whatever. Um, so, you know, or, or you come from a history, a family history that you just get on with things, you know, you don't moan and groan and, um, you just, you get on with it, right? We live in such a different world now where we complain a lot more, I feel like. Um, maybe we have more time to, I don't know. Um, but how much that we carry with us now in our relationships comes from those childhood years. It amazes me um, to see just how much it does carry over and stays with us throughout all of our adult years. Um, so it would be great if more of this was taught to children in schools and in the home. Um, trust, support, right? That's a big one. Um, I was saying earlier that, you know, in my family, I always remember feeling like my family had my back. Um, and I do try and give that to others in my life um, because I think it's important and it feels really good to know that you're supported, right? It feels to me, that feels like love when, when I feel supported, when somebody's just there and um, even just saying to me, you know, whatever you need or um, somebody who wants to listen, right? Who just lets you talk, who, you know, if you need to talk about something or, you know, feels, it feels like love, you know? Um, so five essentials, those are five essentials to having a healthy relationships, health, healthy relationship. So why do relationships matter? This is from psychalive.org. Research shows that good relationships help people live longer, deal with stress better, have healthier habits and have stronger resistance to colds, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. That's funny. Um, in two thousand, in a two thousand ten review of one hundred and forty eight studies, it's not a big study. Researchers found that social relationships improve lifespans. So, how do you feel about that? Do you feel? that the relationships that you have, the social relationships that you have, have improved your lifespan? Um, I could see that. I could see that. And, you know, dealing with stress better, helping people live longer, those who want to live longer, right? Um, hey, John. So, you know, and then the healthier habits have healthier habits. I could see that too. You know, if you have somebody that's in your life that you're um, in some way in a relationship and you share information with, with healthy habits, um, I could definitely see that. Now, a stronger resistance to colds, I don't know. I'm not really sure where that came from. That's, I mean, okay, building up the immune system, I get that. I get that. Um, so, I don't know if 
colds is the only thing that I would put on there. So, but it would be interesting to know about other dis-ease in, in the body and in, in life um, that we deal with. Um, okay, so what are the four types of relationships? Apparently there's four types. This is new to me. We have family relationships. We have friendships. We have acquaintance ships, which I didn't even know that was a word until today. And we have romantic relationships. And of course, some of those cross over right? Um, family relationships are also can be friendships. Um, romantic relationships can be friendships. So I thought that was interesting that there's four types of relationships. Um, what three things make a relationship? This is according to the experts. Trust, commitment, and vulnerability. Trust allows a couple to know that their partner is there for them or in a relationship, right? So it doesn't have to be just a couple. But trust allows um, for that the other person to know that you're there for them, truly cares about them, and is coming from a good place and supports them. That's very good points. Um, now... There are stages of relationships. And according to mindbodygreen.com, all relationships move through these five stages. Are you ready? They're cyclical, not, not linear. Stage one. <laughs> this is great, we're learning a lot today. The first stage of a relationship, are you ready? is the merge, <laughs> AKA the honeymoon stage. Have, have you ever heard somebody name that the merge? Isn't that funny? It's the initial sweeping romance that often consumes a couple. I'm gonna speak whimsically now. Um, when they first get together, including an all-consuming joy in the presence of our partner. Um, now, this looks like it's going to go through um, romantic. That's kind of like a romantic relationship. Stage two, doubt and denial. Ah! That's when we f finally start to actually notice the differences between us and our partners. Oh my God. That's scary. Um, or our friends or that person that we're in that relationship with. Okay. So this, this, pay, this resource that I'm looking at is really about, they're talking about couples, but you can totally and 100% apply this to any relationship, okay? Um, so that's stage two, doubt and denial. We wake up and we say, oh my God, there's differences between us, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then friction is a natural, it's, is natural. Once we run up against each other's differences, power struggles increase. We marvel at the change in, the, in, in, our, in our friend or partner, whoever we're with. Feelings of love mixed with alienation and irritation, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's a whole nother thing. And then stage, stage three, disillusionment. The third stage of any relationship. It's the winter season of the relationship. Um, power struggles relationship um, comes to the surface. The issues uh, have consistently shoved under the rug are now glaringly obvious. Um, some people have become perpetually vigilant, ready to fly into battle at the slightest provocation. All right, let's move on here. Stage four, decision stage. You decide, do you wanna, do you wanna remain friends with this person? Are they somebody that you wanna be in a relationship with? any longer or was it a short-lived thing that you can now move on from because you got what you needed and now you have grown separately or whatever it is um which i think takes a lot of maturity to do that um the stage fifth stage is wholehearted 
Um, and that's when it's at its healthiest, the relationship's at its healthiest and most rewarding. It's the summertime of the relationship. I think that's cute. I think that's adorable. All right, so let's see what else we have here. Please hold. <laughs> what do you all think about relationships? What kind of relationships are you having in your life today? We talked about the four relationships. Um, healthy relationships involve, and this is kind of cute, it comes from newyork.gov. Um, honesty, trust, respect, open communication between people, and they take effort and compromise from both people. There's no imbalance of power. People respect each other's independence and can make their own decisions without fear of retribution or retaliation and share decisions. Um, so yeah, I mean, I really just wanted to bring up this topic today because I want to acknowledge that relationships can be challenging. And the question is, are they meant to be? Or are they meant to be easygoing, pain-free? What do you think about it? How do you feel about it? Um, and how much in your life, relationship-wise, do you feel stems from your upbringing? Your communication, your ability to communicate with people, your ability to trust, your ability to have healthy boundaries. Um, can you trace that back? And can you also perhaps shake off any kind of blame or uh, resentment about anything negative that you feel recurs in your relationships today because of all of that? Or can you acknowledge them and find healthy ways to to deal with them and perhaps um, grow from them. So in my personal relationship with my husband, um, it takes work, you know, marriage, marriage takes work, any relationship takes work, um, but a good work, you know, and the summertime portion of any relationship that we were just talking about, that, that place where you feel like you're wholehearted in, in the relationship. Um, it's a good place, but it's also to remember that it, in any relationship, it comes and goes. Not every relationship stays, I don't think any relationship stays there every single day, every moment of every day. So, you know, for those out there looking for the perfect relationship, I hate to say this to you, and I am no expert, I'm not like a doctor of relationshipness, but I don't think the perfect relationship exists. And lastly, I hate to drop that bomb on you, um, but lastly, and most importantly, what about the relationship with you, with yourself? How is that going? How much time do you spend on that? Um, you know, do you have time for yourself? Do you treat yourself well? Do you eat right? Do you drink enough water? Do you um, take that quiet time that feels so good to take? Um, so, and, and, and from that place, that foundation, we can build stronger relationships too, right? So 
if I'm really well in myself, if I spend time uh, meditating, writing in a journal, um, going for those walks, spending time, giving myself time. Now I'm giving myself messages of love and kindness and support and trust and I'm building boundaries that make me feel good right about myself. I'm building my self-esteem in this way because I'm constantly telling myself that I love myself. Now from that place, that foundation, I'm going to demand those things from the relationships around me. And we all know that it doesn't feel good, right? When, when something doesn't feel good in a relationship. And it's good to listen to those messages. It's good to take a minute and ask ourselves, wait a minute, that doesn't, why doesn't that feel good? And is it something about me going on? Is there something going on with me? Or is it something bigger? And um, yeah, I think there's, there's so many um, avenues that can be taken with this topic. Um, I said lastly, but now I'm really gonna make this the last thing. Um, doing, practicing yoga for me is a wonderful relationship for me that I have with myself as well. So, you know, taking that time to reinforce that love that I have for myself to, um, reinforce that message. Um, so for you, maybe, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's something else. Um, what are we trying to say today? Relationships are challenging. Maybe they're supposed to be, maybe they're not. Um, the dog's about to bark. So that's my exit, my cue to go. And I hope everybody has a great day. Let me know what topics you want to discuss. It's really just a get together on Fridays at 1230. I hope to see you sometime. Thanks for being here.